Steph, good morning. We're going to start here. Toronto police are searching for a missing 12-year-old girl with autism from the city's East End. Tanaya Earl's family says she has been missing now for over 24 hours. She's 12 years old. Uh, she functions at a seven-year-old level. She's wearing a short sleeve shirt, uh, possibly blue or a dark colored with white stripes. Um, she's potentially wearing black leggings, uh, black running shoes with pink and white trim. Now, she was last seen around 1.30 Monday morning near Dawes Road and Gower Street. That's in the Victoria Park and Danforth area. Officers say it's possible she has made her way further away from home. Tanaya is likely alone. Her family is very concerned for her safety. Please do contact police if you have any information. Well, we are expected to learn more today on the province's plans to introduce strict COVID policies for health care and education workers. Sources say the province's top doctor expected to make an announcement after Cabinet approved these details last night. The plans reportedly won't make vaccinations mandatory, but those who refuse shots will need to complete a COVID-19 education session and must be tested before coming into work. The directive covers hospitals, ambulance services, and community and home care service providers. It's expected to come into effect September the 7th. And sources say the Ministry of Education also planning to introduce a similar policy. So stay tuned for that throughout the show. Meanwhile, with the start of the new school year just a few weeks away, Toronto has opened up another pop-up youth clinic to help get more shots into arms. Mayor John Tory visiting this new clinic. This is at the Albion Centre yesterday. Reiterating his support to get as many young people as possible vaccinated before school begins. He also supported proof of vaccination forms and Ottawa's decision to make vaccines mandatory for federal workers. <laughs> Based on local Toronto data, 98.7% of hospitalized COVID-19 cases over the past four months have involved people not fully vaccinated. This is a health issue, and so I welcome the Government of Ontario and all governments taking all appropriate actions to keep people healthy. Now, the city has seen uh, somewhat of a plateau when it comes to people getting their first shots, but Toronto health officials are optimistic that those numbers will continue to grow. We are seeing people taking advantage of opportunities when those opportunities to receive vaccine are actually readily accessible. To date, 74% of Toronto residents 12 years and older have had both doses of their COVID-19 vaccine. Well, the province has announced more efforts to get students vaccinated. Local health units will soon be hosting clinics inside of schools. The ministry says clinics will open before school starts in September and run for the first few weeks of classes. And coming up here at 7 o'clock, an interesting story here. An 11-year-old from Toronto who had a vaccine appointment in London, it was cancelled after the public health unit was told to stop administering shots to that age group. There's a lot to that story. Again, we're going to break that down just after 7. Let's get to the campaign trail now. Federal party leaders looking to get your vote for September the 20th. City News reporter Shali Lee now with everything you need to know as candidates kicking off their first full day in campaign mode. For years, the NDP, Greens and the Bloc have helped Justin Trudeau cover up his scandals. None of them have a plan to get Canada out of debt. Conservative Party leader Aaron O'Toole launches his party's platform, pitching the Tories as the only real opposition to what he says is a coalition of willing partners. It's a very similar line to what's being pitched by the NDP, who say the Liberals and Conservatives are two sides of the same coin. We want to make the ultra-rich pay their fair share, stop the free ride that Liberals and Conservatives have given them, and make sure that they are contributing fairly so that we can invest in people. A re-elected Liberal government will extend and introduce new emergency supports for businesses and workers to make sure we build back better for everyone. Meanwhile, Justin Trudeau was at a Montreal factoring announcing a plan to extend a hiring benefits program originally set to expire at the end of November. We'll extend the Canada Recovery Hiring Program until March 31st, 2022. Meanwhile, the only party leader without a seat in the Commons, Annamie Paul, was knocking on doors in Toronto Centre, urging voters to give her a chance. To be able to be here and focusing on the needs of this community, um, selling them on a green vision for how we could take better care of this community is very, very welcome and is really the only silver lining of this unnecessary election. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News. 
Okay, so let's give you a look at where the candidates are on day three on the campaign trail. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau in Markham today making an announcement on support for Canadian families. Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole beginning his day in Toronto before heading to Richmond Hill for a rally. Jagmeet Singh, leader of the NDP in B.C., making an announcement and a tour of a PPE manufacturer. Green leader Annemi Paul is in the city once again, uh, mainstreeting at Regent Park this afternoon before canvassing Toronto Centre residents at Dundas Square. Stay with citynews.ca for all of these stories and more. And coming up next, it is 610. A lot of stress ahead in the upcoming school year and new reports suggesting back to school, the shopping could cost more than usual. Just what we want to hear. Mike Eppel, he's back and explains.